Colin Mercer at the Millennium Room in the Legislative Buildings, speaking with John Canine, RBV. Uh, congratulations, first of all. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you very much. Um, in your sort of acceptance speech, you gave uh, quite a quite a modest, I think it'd be fair to say, um, introduction to yourself, um, and said that accepting the award took some consideration. But um, just wanted to get your your reaction. I suppose it must be very humbled. Yes, it is. Uh, you see, I've enjoyed what I've done, and it, the enjoyment itself is payment. And I wasn't expecting to be nominated for the RBV, and yet here I am. As I say, I, I took a couple of days to to consider whether to accept it or not. But eventually I decided that I would, and I've accepted it in, in, by including my cousin Brian Canine, uh, the late Brian Canine, professor of languages in Canada, who left Culture Van in almost half a million Canadian dollars, uh, which they used to buy the house, the Culture Van in house out at uh, the Tinwood Fairfield, and they've made a, a, a fine cultural centre there. Uh, so I thought Brian ought to be remembered, even if his name is not on the trophy, that I would remember his name today. I'm sure all, all of us um, listening would, would agree. It was a really nice touch, actually, to, to hear a bit about your, your cousin as well. Um, I wanted to ask a bit more about your original sort of exposure to folk music and your um, maybe the reasons why you decided to, to take an interest in it throughout your life, really. We heard a bit about um, the skiffle groups in the 1950s. Um, so is, is that where it blossomed? That's where it started, effectively. Uh, everybody, every young fellow was after a guitar and all you needed to do was to learn three chords and you could sing Rock Island Line like uh, uh, any of the pop stars then. It was only a short-lived uh, genre of music, skiffle, but over the four years that it existed, a lot of people who became pop stars began like the Beatles in a, in a skiffle group. And uh, I don't know that there was anything particularly intrinsic in the material itself. It was just that it was fun to do and something that you didn't require a great deal of skill to do either. You, you mentioned sort of the, the, l <coughs> the lust for the guitar, um, which some people had. And um, as was mentioned, I think, in, in Brescia's speech, you're uh, more than proficient on a number of instruments um, and, and with your voice um, and with dancing as well. What, what came first and how did that progress in, in musical terms? Well, I suppose the dance came first, the Manx dance, because we did it in primary school. I went to Murray's Road School and we had teachers there who taught us Manx dancers. Those were in the days of the large dance festivals that were held down in the Villa Marina Garden once a year in the summer and all the primary schools got together. And uh, as I say, I enjoyed dancing up to leaving primary school. Once I went on to secondary school, of course, uh, puberty and women and all sorts of other things raised their heads. But primary school was when I began to take an interest. Then, of course, it was the skiffle. So, so musically, then, was did um, I mean? You're perhaps best known, I mean, I don't know, maybe for the button accordion. Um, but was that what came first or kind of no. instrumentally? I mean, what, where did that begin? Well, you see, uh, I lived and worked in Liverpool for seven years. And uh, while I began my sojourn in Liverpool, playing the guitar and singing songs and going to um, folk clubs there, so <laughs> I met the spinners and they 
took me under their wing and I became interested in playing the concertina, the English concertina. And uh, I, did, I became reasonably proficient. It was a Hona poker work, it's called. It is black design, uh, no, black background with a gold design on. And it cost me almost a hundred pounds. Uh, and th we started the Calagas Cayley band. Uh, myself, Bob Carswell, Mike Neal, uh, Simon Caplin, and several more. And uh, we started playing for people who wanted us to play. Uh, and we, that eventually ended up, but we played together for something like 35 years. Uh, for about 20 of those, I was using a much better put an accordion that I, is, is Italian, uh, which cost over a thousand pounds, and of which part of the RBV, uh, 500 pounds they gave me as part of the uh, present. Uh, I have, just before Christmas, replaced the bellows on this Italian uh, but an accordion at a cost of 420 pounds. So it's not a cheap instrument, but uh, I'm grateful to RBV for the opportunity to buy the, uh, buy the put an accordion's bellows. Um, as well as your own musical contributions um, over, over many years now, also I think what was praised uh, in, in Brescia's speech and, and echoed by others is the, the work you've done to facilitate the music of others, to, to promote, to record, to document all kinds of musical activity and especially for the, for the next generation of musicians as well and that seemed to be uh, equal reason for, for winning this award. Well it's very nice of Brescia to say so but uh, again it was a hobby that I enjoyed when I began recording uh, musicians locally in the music sessions. It was a, a recorder that was like a suitcase. Now you use a, a little uh, solid state recorder that's the size of a cigarette packet, which gives you better quality recordings. But uh, as I say, I enjoyed it. And the uh, cassettes accumulated. Then I got a, a mini disc recorder and the mini discs uh, accumulated. Now, as I say, I uh, record with solid state and transfer that to CD. So now the CDs accumulate. I have to ask um, about the, the folk show on Manx Radio. And um, again, it's mentioned at, at length. Um, the effort and the hours over many years um, put in on, on your part. I suppose I wanted to ask if there have been any personal highlights over the years or any, any, any of your fondest memories. Well, not really, no, I must confess. <coughs> I took over the programme from David Collister many 30 odd years ago. I, perhaps one of the highlights, yes, was interviewing Tommy Makem of the Clancy Brothers. Yes, I, I interviewed Tommy Makem by, down the telephone. He was in Cork and it was nice to talk to him. I interviewed Ewan McCall and uh, I've interviewed Irish singers. I used to go regularly over to Ireland. Uh, to a festival there, and I would interview collectors there and singers there, and uh, there are very little, if anything, has been erased. It's all there on the shelf. Thank you very much indeed for, for talking to me. Congratulations again. My um, pleasure. And I'm sorry that I've become so hoarse. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Th thank you very much. I really pleasure. appreciate it. Congratulations. Thank you.